Tonight, calls across the political spectrum for the resignation of Republican Senators Richard Burr of North Carolina and Kelly Loeffler of Georgia. They are facing strong accusations based on financial disclosures they themselves filed that one of the first things they did after they found out just how bad the coronavirus would be during closed door Senate briefings was sell a huge amount of stock right before the market tanked. Both senators deny doing anything unethical. I'm joined now by Derek Willis, the ProPublica reporter who co-authored the story revealing that Senator Burr had dumped up to $1.7 million in stock. Also with me, Tim Mack, NPR's Washington investigative correspondent who uncovered audio of Senator Burr privately raising the alarm about the coronavirus back in February while the president was reassuring the public there was nothing to worry about. Um, Derek, let me start, start with you and take me through basically these two senators and what they did and why they look suspicious. Sure. Well, I think the first thing to keep in mind essentially is that there's a timeline here, right? The senators, when they make stock trades or when stock made trades are made on their behalf, they have to file reports with the Senate on a fairly regular basis saying what those were. And in this case, after that January 24th briefing uh, for all senators about the coronavirus, in the weeks after, days and weeks after that, we've had a couple of different senators file reports of stock sales. In the case of Senator Burr, well, the reason that we wrote about his activity was just because it was so out of the ordinary for him in terms of his trading activity dating back over the last year or so that we looked. And so with Senator Loeffler, her, we don't have a lot of history in that she's a new senator. And so all we have to go on is the reports that were filed and hers were filed you know, again, in the, in the days and weeks after that initial briefing, Senator Burr is the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, also obviously has access to classified briefings about, about all sorts of security threats to the nation. The, the, two, the two details that stick out to me and are, are that Burr basically essentially sells a huge amount of stock, which he hasn't done in, in previously, right? Like sort of gets out of the market yes. and doesn't buy a lot of stuff. Loeffler sells a lot of stuff that would later tank and also purchases a big chunk of stock in Citrix, which runs like telemeeting software, which just seems like amazing luck uh, to just buy it at that time. Tim, you, you're the one who reported um, on, on the fact that Burr behind closed doors was really concerned about the severity of this. And I want, want to play the audio uh, that you unearthed of him telling uh, sort of well-connected constituents at, at a meeting just how bad it could be. Take a listen. There's one thing that I can tell you about this. It is much more aggressive in its transmission than anything that we have seen in recent history. It's probably more akin to the 1918 pandemic. Um, that was not the note necessarily he was striking in public. That's right. In public, he was saying that the United States was better prepared than any uh, any other time in its history, based in part because of legislation that he had helped uh, author. Now, he, uh, Senator Burr is an expert in uh, public health and, and pandemic preparedness because he's been working on this issue for decades, mm. almost 20 years. And the question is, with his expertise and his assessment, uh, this very dark assessment of what was to come, why did he not share his assessment with the public? Now, you, um, uh, the, the, the senator attacked you uh, for your journalism. Uh, I didn't think he frankly landed any blows. Uh, but uh, then there was, after your piece, there was a reporting on his stock sales. Have they given an explanation? Has Senator Burr given you or anyone an explanation for the sales, Tim? Uh, no, not for the sales themselves. They said that they had not done anything wrong. They say that uh, the sales were made based on public information, that is, news reports, uh, CNBC news reports, uh, and not private information that it was obtained as a part of his role as a lawmaker or as a uh, as the Senate Intelligence Committee chairman. I, but not a, a general explanation of how that squares with uh, his uh, declination to tell the public about uh, about what his assessment yeah. was and how bad coronavirus would become. Yeah, well, this gets to the law here, Derek, right? I mean, so you can imagine a world in which Senator Burr is just a person who's very tuned in to news about pandemics, right? That he hasn't gotten some, I mean, he's getting, he's getting in secret pretty different things, right? But even if he weren't, he was just like a pandemic dude. And he's like, this is going to be bad. The idea, first of all, that your first thought is to sell your stock and not to also go to the public and warn them, like, 
The question is, can he do this legally? Or, or is there legal liability under this new legislation called the Stock Act, which restricted how Congress can uh, sell individual stock that Burr voted against? Does he have legal liability? So the question really is, is it depends, right? And it depends on the context. And, and obviously, in this situation, with what Tim's reporting has uncovered, like that supplies some additional context here. It's, it's unclear in terms of exactly what his liability could be, but this is the sort of situation that the Stock Act was literally written to address, right? It forces disclosure, periodic disclosure, that's more timely so that the public can see when people are in Congress are trading on information that they know, whether they get that from public sources or from private sources. The Senate Ethics Committee, the senator has asked for a review by the Ethics Committee, they certainly, you know, they can look into this. I think the, it'll really be up to, you know, sort of the senator to provide the information that he was aware of, and then the ethics committee can, will, you know, make a determination on on what actually the responsibility is on his part. I should note there's a few other senators who who sold sock in this period. Diane Feinstein, who's a Democrat, uh, Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. Uh, Sonny Perdue, it uh, looks like, in uh, uh, Georgia, um, all of whom I should just note, I think are in a different category and have been somewhat persuaded uh, or not quite as suspicious as this, which is why we kind of kept them out of this reporting until we sort of get a further, fuller picture. But the politics here are terrible, Tim, for, for Senator Burr. Um, Tom Tillis from uh, North Carolina, Senator Burr owes North Carolinians an explanation, which is really quite a thing uh, to, to say about your fellow senator. Well, uh, Senator Burr is not running for re-election. Senator Tillis is running for re-election and obviously has to uh, react. There's a lot of bipartisan outrage over this issue of stock selling. Uh, if there was inside information on coronavirus being traded upon, uh, there are folks on the left and right united to say, hey, uh, uh, Senator Burr uh, should resign or should at least explain how it is that he came to make these sales. All right, Derek Willis and Tim Mack, thank you both for being with me.